as you may be well aware, there are different types of biopolymers. A good example of a biopolymer is polylactic acid, or PLA, which is used mainly for 3D printing applications, among other things. Uh, but it's the main kind of uh, 3D printing filament that's, uh, that's used. However, there are many other bioplastics that are out there that are even simpler and cheaper to manufacture than PLA. One such polymer is thermoplastic starch, which is basically a type of starch that's been partially hydrolyzed and turned into a plastic. Now, what we're going to be using today to make thermoplastic starch is this. This is potato starch, which I've uh, made from some potatoes. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mixing this with acetic acid, which is vinegar, and that's going to partially uh, break up the uh, the chains that are in the starch, which are mainly amylose and amylopectin, which are t two types of sugars. And what the acetic acid is going to do is it's going to break down the amylopectin to dextrin, and what we'll be left with is dextrin and amylose, which make a biodegradable plastic. Now, usually this on its own is quite brittle, and so what we're going to need is a plasticizer. Now, conveniently, both starch and glycerin are water soluble. And what that means is that we can we can plasticize uh, starch with glycerin, and we can make the the resulting plastic uh, less brittle, uh, slightly tougher, and more ductile. So what do we have here? In this beaker, I have about in between 50 and 100 milliliters of water. I have about 10 to 15 grams of starch, there's a potato starch, and we're going to be using acetic acid, or white vinegar. And obviously we're using a glycerin today as our plasticizer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the stirring, turn on the heat, add the starch, and I'll be back with you in a second. Now that all of our starch is dissolved, looks like, I'm going to begin adding the acetic acid and bring that up to around somewhere in between 150 and 175 mils. And now that that's added, I'm going to bring it to a boil and then eventually when it boils down enough, I'm going to start adding some glycerin. So as you can see, our mixture has started to boil. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add our plasticizer, in this case our glycerin. Not too much, not too little. And that brings us up to that's yeah, almost 150 or maybe that's just above 150. Alright, so as you can see, our mixture has been boiled down uh, considerably. What I'm going to do now is let that boil down to about uh, 50 mils, and then I'm going to let it cool down a bit, and then we'll get to the fun part, which is casting it. Right, so now it is casting time. I boiled this down a little bit uh, less than um, 50 mils. As you see, it's getting a bit thicker. It's gotten a bit thicker. So now is the moment that hopefully you've been waiting for. Now this is still quite uh, wet with water, which was, was it the solvent we was using. 
Um, I'm going to come back tomorrow. We're going to wait uh, 24 hours or so for this to dry. And we'll see what we get. And here are our results. So, what I had to do, it's been a few days since I made the last bit of this video. I've basically gone and uh, helped this along a bit in the drying process using my, my hot plate. And this is what we get. Uh, this is a it's a more plasticized uh, thermoplastic starch. It's you know as you see it's, it's it's very rubbery, very you know very soft, very flexible. Um, it has a little bit of tensile strength, uh, not much. You can pull it apart and everything. It's made a hole in it. But where a uh, soft plastic like this would excel is in its impact strength. Now I would test this, but it's a bit late in the evening and I don't want to be banging about. But yeah, something like this could be used for many things, uh, you know, as a as a rubber, as a form of uh, shock absorption. Um, although one thing that I find interesting is that this could be used as what's known as a master batch and what that means is it's you have a material that's super concentrated with the properties that you want to impart on another material so for instance if i have pla as my base material and i want to make it a bit more ductile a bit more flexible um, and a bit tougher what i can do is make a blend of PLA and thermoplastic starch or TPS and that will alter the properties of the PLA itself uh, making I guess a homebrew PLA plus if you will. The only problem with that is that PLA is very hydrophobic it's very non-polar whereas starch um, TPS is very hydrophilic. It, it in fact it dissolves in water quite uh, quite readily with some some heat and a bit of stirring. Um, something that can be done about that is to use what's known as a surfactant. Now, in layman's terms, what a surfactant basically is is it's a substance that makes it easy for or at least makes it easier for hydrophilic and hydrophobic substances to mix an example of a surfactant is actually soap which you know is is the reason why soap is good at cleaning up uh, dirt however there are other surfactants as well such as i believe citric acid which is readily available if i was to add a little bit of citric acid to the to a potential PLA TPS blend maybe that would improve the interfacial adhesion between the hydrophobic PLA and the hydrophilic TPS something i want to do in the near future or at least try is making a plastic a, a thermoplastic starch that's a little bit firmer a little bit uh harder a little bit more rigid um with this off camera i actually added a little bit more uh, glycerin to the mixture that i made and i actually think that i could have put in a little bit less i mean uh, don't get me wrong this is good this this is a good master batch um however if i want to make something structural or something at least more rigid I'm going to need to use less plasticizer in the future. I may do some other testing, like some solubility testing in the future of this material. However, for now, I think uh, what I have shown will suffice. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Anyway, I've been Adam. This has been How to Make Thermoplastic Starch. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.